Welcome, foolish mortals, to our extra spooky Halloween special. I'm here with your ghost hosts, Jess, Heather, and Jeff, to give you a special tour of Walt Disney's Haunted Mansion. But first, the week's travel news. Brace yourself for wall-to-wall creeps and hot and cold running chills. It's time to hit the road with the Gold Key Adventurers Society. When hinges creak in doorless chambers and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls, whenever candle lights flicker where the air is deathly still, that is the time for us to get through this week's travel news so we can get to the good part and talk about the Haunted Mansion. But first, I was wondering, if you became the 1,000th happy haunt in the Haunted Mansion, in which room would you want to take up residence? The dining room. There's food in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At a party. A Do you care about food when you're a ghost? They seem to. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it keeps on disappearing. And Shooting each other. That's true. Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for the, the graveyard because, I mean, that's just a straight up party. Like That's true. Yeah, it's yeah. Like fun. They're all in there singing. Yeah, like, they're all just popping loose. Down. <laughs> that, that pneumatic head's always like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> that guy always gets... <laughs> yeah. There used to be like 10 times more of those guys through the place. I the know. attic used to be full of them. That was you the only thing that just... like, got me when I was a kid. The only thing that scared me. <laughs> The ones that just pop up from behind the <laughs> yeah, and you can see the pole they're cuts. stuck to. It's not a very yeah. good effect, but it just it's a jump scare. It gets you. you know. yeah. It's fun. I'm gonna go with the uh, MC Escher staircase room, mm-hmm. just because that's it's cool. One of my favorite rooms to look at, but mm-hmm. I don't know if I want to be stuck in there just doing the stairmaster. Just the haunting time. people. On the- well, you're a ghost. You can float up and down them. Oh, yeah, but all point. the annoying people mm-hmm. that are looking mm-hmm. for you would have a hard time finding you. Yeah, that maze of stairs. No, yeah. there's a spot in the corridor of doors where there's like the family portraits of the guy holding the hatchet with the noose around his neck. And mm-hmm. there's a little end table with a reading lamp there. Yes, I, I think like it'd be that a nice spot. place to pull up the Donald Duck chair and sit down and, and read a book. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. good call. Peace and quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'll just, I'll just sit there. Duck chair. <laughs> a, a, a ghost, a, a book of ghost stories, I, I assume, right? Oh, there you go. Like Jeffrey. If the, the hit movie <laughs> Ghost starring Patrick Swayze taught us anything, you just got to concentrate that enough. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. <laughs> and you can make a horse <laughs> touch. Move yeah. up the wall. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, what a good movie. Well, anyway, our show this week is brought to you by Key to the World Travel. Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in theme parks, cruising, and destinations around the world. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com for more details and a no-obligation quote on the vacation of a lifetime. Jess, uh, festivals are are still the thing. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I think out of this whole pandemic, all the all the downsides, I think the the people at Disney are very excited that they've been able to easily expand the names of their festivals, make them even more longer words, than they more already. More words. So now we've got uh, coming up the Taste of Epcot Festival of the Arts, because Epcot Festival of the Arts wasn't good enough. It was not long enough. Just get a taste. Just a taste of me. Just a taste. Not quite as good as most of yours. <laughs> it's a smidge. It's a yeah, they, they, yeah, they, a the original title was uh, A Smidge of Epcot Festival of the Arts. Or oh, I like that one better. Dollop of Epcot Festival of the Arts. <laughs> Dollop of Epcot. Dollop of Epcot. Of the, Arts. The, the Daisy Sour Cream people went. Trademark. They declined to sponsor. Yeah, they're not sponsoring this year. So, um, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, yep. So we're gonna get a taste of the Epcot Festival of the Arts from January eighth through February twenty second of next year. Um, and so they're going to include. It's obviously not going to be as uh, elaborate as it has been in the past. But this year is going to have over fifteen of the food studios, which I think is funny. They changed it from kitchen to studio. That's more artsy. Um, yes, absolutely. How many do they normally have? Do you I feel, 300. <laughs> I feel like it's closer to like 25, 30. Mm-hmm. I feel like most That's of the festivals are, are in the 25 range. Um, they're going to have, uh, you're going to be able to purchase the work of Disney and other invited artists that will be on display in the marketplaces around World Showcase Lagoon. So it sounds like they will have uh, Still some have visiting the artists. 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 Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about that. Uh, and they're going to have the special photo locations where you can put yourself in uh, classic works of oh, art. Oh, good. I love those. Yeah, those yeah. are classic. It's always good to get a, I enjoy those. Get a little tipsy and, and 
see what you can get away with in those photos. Act out Washington crossing the Delaware. <laughs> <Yes>. with... <laughs> um, and they'll have the paint by mural, uh, paint by numbers mural, excuse me, that they've had before. I think last year it was figments uh, where you just can participate. Just a little physically distanced. Yeah, I think they'll just probably <laughs> be spacing out who they let on the wall at, at, mm-hmm. at one time. And there'll be an artful scavenger hunt where you'll search for figment around World Showcase. I'm going to be heading down for that. I'll be there actually the, the day that opens. So I think that might be my favorite of the festivals because I love art anyway. And I like it the interactive fine. paintings and I always find, wind up buying some piece of art there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I still have a few artists that I have missed from the times that I've visited. They've not been there the times I've been there that I really want to meet. So hopefully this year I can uh, check a few of those off my list. Yeah, good mm-hmm. luck. Have they released a list of those yet? Not yet. And the the ones that I follow on Instagram that I'm big fans of have mentioned that they haven't heard any details and they're waiting to find out if they're going to be invited and if they decide to go and all that. Mm. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. Something so else? Think- oh, go ahead. Sorry, Dan. I, I, I was just wondering if you guys think that maybe somebody either in marketing or in Imagineering was sitting around one day and was joking about uh, seeing how long they could get the names for these things to be just <laughs> just to be yeah. dicks. And, and someone else took it seriously and it stuck because oh, I said dicks. <laughs> Next is going to be a sampling of a taste of the festival of the yes. <laughs> A whiff of so. the <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's fitting in for now. Dip back to something we were talking about just before Jess started in with the news is that now Patrick Swayze could actually be. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would explain that weird sensation behind me every that's time right. I'm at my pottery wheel. That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's, and I don't think it's too yeah. soon. I think it's okay to say that. Is it really sad? He just, I mean, death comes for us all. You're not a fan what are you of looking Patrick forward to, either? <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner, but you can't keep Patrick Swayze from death. <laughs> I mean, he's fine. I know you nobody, cannot. Nobody puts Swayze in a grave. <laughs> <laughs> not for long, at least. Oh, <laughs> I have the time so of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and my afterlife. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what are you looking forward to, Heather? Well, in more good news, I think I think I figured out Disneyland's strategy for how they're going to reopen Disneyland in defiance of Gavin. <laughs> so. So we just found out a few days ago that beginning in November, Disneyland is going to open all of Buena Vista Street in Disney California Adventure as a shopping and dining district. (laughs) I think this is a genius idea. Let's just open it all. Just the restaurants and the shopping. None of the none of the rides. Let's throw it open and say, you know. YOLO. So step one of that is yeah. official, right? Step one is official. Is starting in November. I haven't seen an exact date. Have you seen anything concrete? No, they Jess? just vaguely no. said November. They just said so far, starting in, in November, they will open all of Buena Vista Street. So the shopping will be open. Elias and Company, uh, Julia Cats store. and Stuns. Yeah, the Oswald store. They're opening Trolley Treats. They're opening. Um, Carthay Circle, Carthay right? will be open for right now, just the lounge. Um, and then around the corner, they'll be opening um, Smoke Jumpers, uh, the restaurant that's right there next to... <laughs> oh, going all the way back All the way yeah, back over there. And wow. then all of the vending carts will be open. Uh, <laughs> and, and all the dining that you can get to all the way down Buena Vista Street and then around the corner will all be opening in November. They've already opened that... Um, Backlot Premier Shop at Stage 17. Why not just open all of Disneyland, both that's, parks? That's that's yeah. really rides. what I'm hoping. I'm and hoping, make yeah. A few bucks, don't charge tickets to go in. Just turn it into a mall. Some malls and restaurants. Yeah, I it's suspect not that much maybe the next thing will be Main Street. Just open Main Street and the shopping. Well, they and the specifically dining. said they, they have no time. Pl- don't have any yeah. plans to open 
right. main street. <laughs> right Somewhere. now, that- they're calling it an extension of downtown Disney. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not that far to just turn the corner and go back to the San Francisco and, and Pixar Pier area. I, I, I mean, don't know. I think I, I just, it feels like this could be the, the you know the opening salvo of that. That they're just going to slowly keep opening a little more and a little more and yeah. it would be kind of cool if just it's all of it's open you don't need a ticket to get in you Welcome can just to this go new mall of yeah. campus. <laughs> right, yes. i'm sure that there there have been many a, a financial officer at, at disney that has tried to figure out a way to just run the parks with no rides and just stores yeah. you know so i mean all of this, like, this stuff is is what, yeah this stuff is what generates money and that's what they exactly. need and it will also allow some people to get back to work finally mm-hmm. yeah the whole situation is just, it's incomprehensible. I don't understand what's less safe about a ride where everyone has a mask on and you're only on it for a few minutes, but a restaurant where no one's, no one's wearing, wearing masks and you're sitting there for an hour or more. Why is yep. that? Why is that okay? And because an attraction science. is not. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think, didn't isn't he trying to change the restaurants there so when you're not actively putting food in your mouth you have to have a mask on yeah have possibly you seen, have, have you seen the guidelines for thanksgiving no uh, in california apparently he said it has to be outside if your you're going to celebrate thanksgiving your yes your own gathering in your house this man outside far. you must be wearing your masks when you're not actively eating singing is strongly discouraged oh and, wait uh, i can't have those thanksgiving kind of carols a... that we usually have right. <laughs> darn is, is he wording this as a mandate or is this just Come his gather round suggestion turkey, son. the the news the news story <laughs> the new story I saw called it guidelines, but then also used the word must. So it didn't say it was a mandate, hmm. however. But I there don't know. is a possibility that your neighbors could rat you out and get mm-hmm. you in trouble for wow. Mm-hmm. A very Karen Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well. I don't I don't know how you can just make these mandates like that. I know. I mean, at, at some point, it, it, you know, my feeling on this, I, I they have reopened successfully all over the world. There's been no outbreaks traced back to a single one of their parks. It's time to open Disneyland. Yeah, Anna, Anaheim is going to suffer for this yeah. um, for a long time. There's a lot of family businesses that are going to go under. There's already, you know, thousands of people out of work. Just and at Disney, yeah, and that's alone. yeah, that's just the people who All work the in the supportive parks. businesses around there, and the Universal Parks mm-hmm. and Sea World out there, the aquarium, all yeah. those things. It's, yeah. it's really sad, but they'll let some dinky carnival open. That's what doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. Because if you think safety, you think carnies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we, no, we establish that they were already immune, so they weren't spreading? Yeah, so we I lost our carny listenership. <laughs> I think we alienated like, Wait, them all the time. This is nothing. <laughs> we Mom alienated them. <laughs> what? Hey, hey, carnies work. Hobos do hobos work? I can't remember anymore. Hobos do work. They travel and they work just like carnies. Oh, it's a complicated Venn diagram. <laughs> I think it's, anyway. it's the tramps that don't I'll work, right? Explain it to you sometime. <laughs> a cup of bat mulligan too. Skinny Pete, that tin can telephone you call it in on has incredible sound quality, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it's time for... For the best travel hacks when you're planning your trips, here's key to the world travel with just the tips. Just the tips. <laughs> R.I.P. Chet Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I I picked uh, I picked this week's tip specifically for you. And now that I say that, I don't want you to be offended by Uh-oh. it just Uh-oh. because I think Is it no. weight loss tips. It's no. never traveled well, with Jeff Williams. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. If, if I know how your brain works, I know exactly what you're going to be saying before the tip's done. So let's, let's take a oh. listen. Hi, I'm Cassie Thomas from Lubbock, Texas. And my tip is to avoid chub rub at all costs. Uh, I have a few product <laughs> recommendations for that. So if you are 
a lady slip shorts or bike shorts underneath your other shorts or dresses. There's also a brand of products called Hickey, H-I-K-I, and they make powder and chafing relief sticks and um, also some really nice body wipes to help cut down on that sweat. So there you have it. Jeff, have you ever had a problem with chub chub. rub? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Do you you feel that chub rub's a problem, Jeff? No, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing it now. I I thought my camera was muted. (laughs) All right, Tubin. (laughs) (laughs) Jeff, he froze and then came back to us. Sorry, I don't have a clue what happened. Just missed the chub rub. I heard the whole thing, thing. and and that's why I was like waiting for some really great responses, and everybody was just sitting there going, "She's talking about rubbing a chub," and then suddenly his camera went black, and now now I can't work at CNN anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy! Well, that's a great tip. Thank you, Cassie. Oh yeah, also is it actually a good tip? Yeah. Uh, okay. Damn it. I picked the wrong week for this. I don't think <laughs> between, there's a good week for that. between Tubin between Tubin and Giuliani, I picked the wrong <laughs> week <laughs> to talk about Chub Rub. Fix them Sorry, up, Mom. That's all. And the same Tubin. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, thanks for this, Yeah, thank you very much. Uh Jess. That, tell us something real that's not about <laughs> rubbing penises. So one of these days, I just want a compilation of all your intros to pitch to me <laughs> for news. <laughs> They're my favorite. Okay. Um, <clears throat> more news from Walt Disney World. Uh, Disney's All Star Movies Resort is set to reopen now on February 9th of next year. Mm-hmm. They kind of snuck that little announcement in with the uh, the promo release. Yeah, that was yeah. If you looked at uh, the available resorts for those promos, uh, All Star Movies was put in there. Um, so mm-hmm. it will be the. Oh, they just added it to the list. Of mm-hmm. promos yeah, they available. didn't make like yeah. a, an actual announcement about yeah. it. So um, it's the first All Star uh, resort to reopen, and they're already taking reservations. So if you'd like to stay there next year, go for it. And say what you will about the All-Stars, but All-Star movies, at least the last time I stayed there, has an amazing tomato soup in their food court. Mm, it sounds really tip. weird, but the food is really good. How's the mulligan stew? Uh, no, no, not as good. <laughs> um, and also from uh, Walt Disney World, we've got news that Disney's fairy tale weddings have returned to the resort. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. Any uh, restrictions? Oh, that they, yes. they talked about? Ah. Definitely. There are new <laughs> safety guidelines in place. Uh, so your face coverings obviously are required for all guests mm-hmm. and members of the wedding party during the ceremony. The couple during may be able ceremony. to, well, during the ceremony, the couple can remove their masks for a limited mm-hmm. period of time. Uh, I'm assuming for, you know, the vows and probably kissing the bride part of the portion of the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you may huff at each other through fabric. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, and, uh, carry, carry on. Yeah, I and so they've also, uh, it, it also includes measures to promote physical distancing among the guests and the cast members. Uh, like the weddings will have limited guest counts and they're working with the couples to find creative ways to set their ceremonies, receptions, and more. So if you are... I heard no dancing at receptions. I'm not surprised by that at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, well, it's hard to dance with plexiglass between. Yeah. I, it's, it, it's, it's pretty telling that they didn't go into a lot of the specifics. They just said, we will work with you and mm-hmm. we have other measures. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're really set on a Disney fairy tale wedding, you might just want to bump it wait. a little bit. I yeah. am going to, re- yes, I recommend you wait. Yeah. I yeah. cannot imagine paying Disney fairy tale wedding prices. No. For, for a less than one hundred percent having the bride and groom have to wear a mask, except yeah. for one. There's so when there's. I mean, the, no. The I will say, in the, will be the only one not wearing the feedback. Particularly <laughs> since <laughs> they, the they have they have many many outdoor venues at Walt yeah. Disney World. Yeah, and mm-hmm. having an outdoor wedding and having to wear a mask during it is uh, just a no. Well, it's for the same me. as walking around Main Street with. Yeah, it's true. 
I will say I the hate photos to say that it, they but the, yeah, the I go to Mexico released. right now for a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> the photos they released, it looks like they, they get um themed masks with like groom and bride blazoned across your face. <laughs> I think they should give them those weird mouth masks. That's so worth the twenty-five to the hundred thousand dollar price tag. (laughs) Although, if they're limiting the number of people you can have at your reception, it'll be less expensive. Yeah, that's true. So no, it won't. No, (laughs) that's true. We're already on the docket. I wonder if they. Like people for 2021, if they canceled everybody's weddings and they have to redo with new rules and pricing, or if they mm-hmm. just stay on the books. Yeah, Curious. they they definitely canceled everyone up through now. Um, yeah. yeah. And that starts when did you say, Jess? They in just 2021. They quietly restarted it and then just announced that they had restarted it with oh. photos of a couple that had recently had a ceremony there. I think they were waiting to have something to market with it mm. photos wise yeah that's a good thought this wedding brought to you by regeneron <laughs> <laughs> yeah to edit out all the hazmat suit you know the reverend in the hazmat suit and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> the end <laughs> yeah yeah i mean what how, else how can you say going? about it it's uh, it's great to feel like some of this the normal stuff is is coming back but yeah like, yeah, I would still, I could still see doing um, an, an engagement because I know they're still doing those photo mm-hmm. packages where yeah. you can have one of the photographers <laughs> and I've sure. seen some engagements with it and it's still super cute. I mean, a mask doesn't really ruin that. They yeah. And that's, that. you know, I have always said that, that a mask is an inconvenience. And if, if that's really what you want and this is the year you want to do it, then yeah. it's great that you can now. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's to the. You're never going to forget this experience. That's, that's kind of true. Thing. Like, that is a really all the 2020 yeah. Yeah. wedding pictures. Mm-hmm. And that it's a silver a really lining to an otherwise pretty shitty year. So you can look mm-hmm. at it that Yeah, way. that's that's very true. And I and I, I I do stand by that. You know, life has to go on. We have to make adjustments, but we have to keep living and keep doing all the things. So that's yeah, that's a better perspective on it, I guess. <laughs> just... <laughs> it's hard to find those these days. Don't worry. Yeah, it <laughs> We're is all hard. struggling. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Well, I'm glad that it's back for people. And hey, maybe if they're traveling from Canada, they can take advantage of uh, Air Canada is one upping the other airlines who are limiting capacity and blocking middle seats and that kind of thing by converting there. And I didn't know that they had this. They had an all business class charter fleet that Mm -hmm. they used normally was reserved for uh, guests like pro athlete teams musicians rock bands bands, yeah that was one of the big Um, selling points in the article i read yeah they're reconfiguring them and using them for regular old folks so they're they're airbus a319s which actually i I fly on those a lot out of our small airport here in grand rapids so they normally seat uh, i think it's like 120 people and they're the way that they're configured on these is it's only 58 seats so it's a, it's a it's a really big plane with only 58 seats and most of them are either seats of two or they have some that are configured as four with a table in the middle facing each other. Mm. And they're going to start flying them and they say that the the price is going to be about what it would cost for a first class ticket on a regular flight. And they're flying them from um Toronto and Montreal. They're going to Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, Fort Myers, Barbados, Cancun, uh, Vancouver, Phoenix, Palm Screen, Palm Springs, and Puerto Vallarta. From only from just Toronto. from Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. Yeah. So just for the Canadians right now, unless you live in hey. Michigan and want to just drive over although i don't think they let us in right now so no <laughs> yeah. <the> canadians <laughs> let us back in um uh, and they Which at the rate they, we're going they, they might not ever dropping, do to be honest excuse me they are dropping some of the um perks that the fancy <laughs> folks usually get like free ipads and gourmet meals and stuff like that. Free iPad. Yeah. <laughs> you only get um, an iPod was, shuffle from the few years back. You will, you will get a Delta, compl- I just get a bag of cheese. Yes. <laughs> you will just get a complimentary iPad to use during your flight. You oh. don't get to keep it. Yeah. And there will be alcohol, which is um, most U.S. airlines haven't relaunched that. 
Delta will give you a beer or some wine. Um, and the meals will be prepackaged instead of the normal fancy served like you're in business class meal. But it was kind of interesting because at the same time that they're <laughs> launching this, the news out of Southwest is uh, they are dropping the blocking of the middle mm-hmm. seats and they're going back to full capacity starting this holiday season. Mm-hmm. Right when I fly with them. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I think this is a result a of, idea. <laughs> I think mm-hmm. it's a result of all of the many, many studies that have been uh, coming out recently that show that the risk of transmission on a flight is very, very low and almost zero if all the passengers are wearing masks. So uh, Delta has Delta has com- uh, committed to doing it at least through the first of the year. And they have said that they're considering extending that. But uh, American stopped and United already. And American United, and United yeah. are the two. Yeah, the two. The, uh, everybody's two favorite mm-hmm. American airlines. Yeah, and they stopped. Yeah. Hasn't it been at least a month, maybe six it's weeks? Been a, it, it's, it's been, been quite a, a while. And there have been no incidences of of transmission on their planes so southwest seems to feel that it's time to take that same step i'm glad that i used up my travel voucher with them last month going to universal so i don't have to use that in the i mean i I don't think it would make me uncomfortable as long as i didn't get seated next to someone who you know keeps sneaking their mask down but i have gotten so used to having so much extra space it's really nice yeah, I'm not. I'm not too worried about it since it's me and my family, and there's three of us, so we'll have a row to ourselves anyway. But I just read yeah. right before the show that Delta has banned over 450 yes. passengers for not wearing masks at this point. I'm, I, Good. Mm-hmm. I can't. Be- I'm, I, I can't believe I'm surprised by that, but I am. Yeah, that's, that's a big and I actually <laughs> wit- for life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. actually witnessed Good. it. Uh, someone being threatened with that last night when I was coming back. My fl- really? Yeah, my flight from Atlanta to Grand Rapids, when she was boarding, she had her nose hanging out. And the gate agent stopped her when she scanned her boarding pad- pass and said, you got to put that over your nose. And she said to her, I heard her, I was right behind her, you have to keep it over your nose the entire flight. And as we're walking, we were walking to board and I she must have pulled it down again before we got to the door because... The uh, the flight attendant at the door told her again, put it over, put it up over your uh, your nose. And she was a few rows behind me and they they must have told her maybe one or two more times before the the flight. Yeah, before the flight attendant said, if I have to tell you again, you're going on the no fly list. And I never heard her say it again. So (laughs) that must have done it. No, mom's serious. Yeah, I mean, I just, they use her middle name. Middle name. <laughs> they yeah. say so many times, and they say it when you check in for your flight. You have to do this little checklist that you haven't been exposed, and you're not. People know what well, they're doing. Yeah. They're doing it on purpose. Yeah, and they text you. I I get you know two to three texts in the days before I leave, reminding you. It's it's not. You can't be surprised by it. They're not. No. Yeah. So. uh I just pulled up the Southwest statement and it does say today aligned with science based findings from trusted medical and aviation organizations. We will resume selling all available seats for travel beginning December 1st. They do also point out that other than right around Christmas and New Year's, you're likely to still have plenty of room since they're not flying very many people anyway. Most of the time, the planes are just not full yet. Um, And they are also saying that they are giving you flexibility uh, to rebook yourself on a different flight if yours seems like it's too full for you. Uh, Except for you better act on that quick if it's for the holiday travel. I think they said the deadline for that was the 31st of October. Uh, You had until October 31st to reschedule uh, December flights. Oh, that and Southwest has been basically just screwing flights every day like they canceled a ton of them i'm lucky that the flight that we have has not been messed with they're still struggling with the lack of the 737 max yeah which will be coming back soon it has been recertified to fly 
Um, they're just in the final phases. I'm going to let them fly a few cycles of that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Guys, remember, remember last summer when that was the big concern in the travel industry was all these planes that were supposedly going to start dropping us out of the sky. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I liked those days. I really did too. Yeah. That was great. (laughs) When those planes crashed. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, you know. (laughs) That part. (laughs) Just when that was the worst thing that we had to worry about was too few flights. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, well, I'm going to stick with Delta. They did say, Ed Bastian said on Wednesday on a, a business call that they're going to continue to block the middle seats uh, well into next year. Um, and we'll see. We'll see when it comes back. We'll see which approach works. Like, mm-hmm. are That's people going to go, I'm more likely to fly now that I can sit shoulder to shoulder with some sweaty guy? <laughs> or if they like, I would like to fly with Delta. I, I, I feel like it might be the second one you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Flying mine. Shoulder to shoulder with a sweaty guy is never my favorite yeah, I don't thing. I want to do that during the non COVID times. <laughs> exactly. Well, guys, here it is the moment we've all been waiting for. Japan is weird. I love making you guys sit through that. That's that's my favorite part of all this. That's so good. I like watching you perform it each week. Um, well, one man band set up like Bert from yeah. Harry Potter. You don't want to know what I do with the lower half of my body to make that music. No, no, we do not. Well, uh, so of all the things that I miss uh, from how life used to be. I think the biggest one is being able to cuddle with randos. Do you guys know what I mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like get intimate with somebody you've never met before and just have a little hug sesh, you know? Um, Well, the next time you're in Japan, hopefully things have changed a little bit and we can all go back to Japan's cuddle cafes. Um, these cuddle cafes cuddle cafes uh, exactly what the thing? name says yes this is a big thing in japan uh, oh, wow. they're advertised <laughs> as co-sleeping specialty shops which sounds like something disney <laughs> would call it that sounds like the disney term for it you know um, co-sleeping specialty shops. <laughs> these are little shops that allow customers to sleep with and only sleep with beautiful women um so this is for the the japanese businessman who's tired works too much doesn't have a girlfriend at home which apparently is 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 most of them at this point which is really sad but they're having a big problem with dating and and getting couples to marry in japan so men are paying now to hang out with women and just do things like uh so for 25 dollars you can hang out and cuddle. Uh, it starts with like you can start with like a twenty minute nap, and you can range all the way up to ten hours or a whole full night's rest, uh, which basically will put you about uh, back about four hundred dollars, which is pretty crazy. What, what kind of cuddling can you spoon? Well, you can order extras ranging from the, <laughs> oh, no. ranging from things listed as girl pets customer on back or girl sleeps with head on customer's lap or my favorite one. The girl okay, stares at you. Down. The girl stares at you. <laughs> what? There is one where she just that. she just stares at you. You can stare back at her. I don't know if that's extra. Oh, no. but I don't even like to see the face. Yeah. There's oh, no there's no. no kissing or intimate contact allowed between the employees and the clients. And the clients are not allowed to ask for the employees' numbers or any way to contact them. And they do have cafes for women where these are uh, boyfriends to rent. And the, the ads for these looks like you're just picking out your favorite K-pop star for a night. It's very weird because it's, it's wow. like very anime looking guys. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, so these are very popular and they're, there's a bunch of them out there. And it seems to be really sad and depressing. How much are these extra yep. a la carte menu items? Um, it depends on the, the cafe and it depends on the, uh, the item apparently. Um, and I really couldn't find any info as to whether any of these have reopened since. I'm assuming probably a few since Japan is a little bit far more progressed in there. Yeah, reopening. Yeah, Japan but, had a Japan had a very low yeah. community transmission, community which is spread, weird because so. they have cuddle cafes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but generally, as a culture, they're kind of clean and yeah. I'm wondering and if they have no problem wearing, wearing masks. Yeah. 
I, I would like to go yes. to the cuddle cafe that has like the whole boy in the bubble setup, maybe where you just have like yes. rubber arms through the, the wall that they'll hug you with. The the balls. Oh, I was picturing in like the giant hamster ball yeah. <laughs> bouncing yeah, off the arm. Put your hand in the air chamber and I'll put mine in there and we can hold them. Oh, yeah. That's such a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, next time in your, you're in Japan and you want to cuddle with randos, eat of the world time. Okay. Well, that's. <laughs> That's fascinating. <laughs> You're not it allowed to certainly touch certainly is something. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got there you. we go. <laughs> <sighs> Almost made it. <laughs> we couldn't quite thread that needle. That's well, stick said. around because... <laughs> especially <laughs> at a, especially at a cuddle cafe. cafe. <laughs> uh, stick around because after the commercial break, we're presenting a master class on Disney's classic theme park attraction, The Haunted Mansion. When it comes to planning your next adventure, knowledge and preparation are always key. That's why a call to your Key to the World Travel Vacation Planner should always be at the top of your to-do list when you feel the urge to venture forth and explore the world. Key to the World Travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner, specializing in travel to Disney theme parks around the world, as well as Disney Cruise Line, Alani, and Adventures by Disney. With over 450 travel advisors who share a deep love for Disney destinations, Key to the World Travel has a wealth of knowledge and passion to help you experience all the magic with none of the work. Wherever your wanderlust is driving you, Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency with the expertise to get you where you want to go. So whether you're headed to Universal Studios, Hawaii, Europe, or somewhere a little farther off the beaten track, your first step should always be to visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a no-obligation quote. Their expert travel planners are standing by to help you with every detail of your perfect vacation. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com or at Key to the World Travel on Facebook. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. I'm your host, your ghost host. Kindly step all the way in, please, and make room for everyone. There's no turning back now. Our master class begins here in this gallery, where I was wondering, guys, what's your favorite ghost in the Haunted Mansion? Do you have a favorite? No qualification on that one, Dan. Well, Are you dropping Jeff the, was uh, complaining. <laughs> I like my qualification of not one of the main characters. I like the, the organist, <laughs> Victor Geist. Yeah, he's pretty yeah, awesome. Mm-hmm, I do like mm-hmm. that effect is always so cool. I love yeah. It. Yeah, and those specters that come out of the organ pipes are yes. really cool. Well, I was going to say, you know, my my fear of being buried alive. I was going to say the guy who's trying to climb out of his coffin. <laughs> let me out! Hey, let <laughs> yeah, me out of here! Yes. I feel him. I, 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 I know what he's going through. <laughs> Well, mine's not a ghost. Then I'm gonna go with the uh, with the the poor caretaker guy and his his dog and his emaciated dog. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> when I was a kid, those those figures actually freaked me out more than pretty much any of the ghosts in there because it has that such weird a great character face. Yeah, it's it's yeah. definitely like that cartoonish face that looks real that you know Disney did that mm-hmm. you know, breaks that that dimension though so, mm-hmm. go yeah that Definitely. uncanny valley is just a like little didn't feed that dog well enough no. <laughs> no. <laughs> poor dog that dog might very well be a ghost to be honest from the looks of his rib cage or he's about to be he's just a greyhound <laughs> yeah he's getting close i was actually also going to say uh the organist in the ballroom but there's another one that i i'm su- kind of surprised that jeff doesn't identify actually there's two really really hardy partiers in that ballroom first is i think his name is he's got a weird name there's a guy that's hanging out on top of the chandelier <laughs> yes. and he's using his cane oh, yeah. to hold on and he's swinging around uh-huh. with his bottle of booze but then have you ever noticed that down underneath the, the dining table there's a pair of ghostly legs sticking out with a bottle of wine on the I floor only next recently to him. Noticed <laughs> no. that. Yes. yeah there's a ghost passed out underneath the yeah. table there i'm embarrassed at how long it took me to notice the two uh paintings that turn and shoot each other guys, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like guys I was always down. Just looking down yeah. at the table and never looked up there and noticed those guys one of my other favorites is the uh <clears throat> i never 
I had seen this one, but didn't notice it until we did a guided tour that included uh, going through there with a narrator talking about some of the things. But right at the end, the opera singing Viking hat wearing lady, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it ain't over till the fat lady sings. So it's right, right. there yeah. at the end of it. The fat lady sings. And I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. She's cool looking, too. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool uh the, the little scenes that are in just the graveyard, the little groups are very funny. If you take a close look at them, there's the, the tea party with the mummy and the fancy old lady. And there's some funny stuff yeah. there. Mm-hmm. The singing statues head, with one of them's head off. That's amazing. That effect kills me still. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. As it should in the mansion. That's right. That could be that thousandth. Mm-hmm. You could. Did you know they actually raffled off the thousand pounds? I was one just going to ask that if anybody <laughs> knew that. And it was a, yeah. a, 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 it was a Disneyland. Yeah, one, Disneyland, right? a guy yeah. paid like $3,000 plus dollars or something. No, it was the $37,000. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That makes more sense. It was a, <laughs> it was a doctor, a Californian. There? His name is engraved on a tombstone. Yeah, he was like a, a doctor. So it's like a medical mm-hmm. death reference I think. Mm. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's in his name like backwards or something yeah and he paid close to forty thousand dollars for that if i had stupid money i would do things like oh that. for sure yeah disneyland fans but with stupid money like, do that stuff all the time like john stamos basically yeah. just spends all his oh, money yeah. on disneyland <laughs> stuff <laughs> yes yeah yeah i would too yeah yeah, dude, I saw on Facebook that's got a Mr. Toad's car in his living room in his apartment. Uh, yeah. If you have a, a guy yeah. that has a Mr. Toad ride vehicle. Mm-hmm. That's just one of his ride vehicles, isn't it? Does he have more than one? It's ride vehicle. He's got a lot of other huge stuff. He's got a, a, like a 64,000 square foot warehouse full of Disney stuff mm-hmm. in Miami. Jeez. I want a Doom buggy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know where I would put it. I'd put that right in my <laughs> living room and I'd watch TV from it. That's like <laughs> yeah, I saw definitely. I saw a few years back on Pinterest actually somebody made a chair that looked like a doom buggy with like the purple plush velvet oh, upholstery nice. on the inside. Very really comfortable. So yeah. <laughs> to improve that. Yeah, you'd have to get tilt it back a little bit and put a cushion <laughs> yeah. on the seat that was like maybe purple and then inside mm-hmm. line it in velvet or something. I have a yeah. permanent lump remember, on my knee from that bar, too, every time. <laughs> Do y'all remember back before they did the Royal Rooms at Port Orleans Riverside when they sent out concept art of that and another mm-hmm. set of art and asked people their opinions on them? And the other set was Haunted Mansion Rooms. Yeah. The, and how did we uh, end up with yes. the pirate those mansion rooms back mm-hmm. in that section of... Yeah. Uh, Port Orleans Riverside. That would be yes. perfect. I would definitely. Stay. And the the bed was a a, a doom buggy. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> uh, they missed. They missed the uh, Those mm-hmm. fools. I want they, to go to there. If only they had mortals. known about the. If only they had known about the downfall of Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody loves. I mean, only little kids love those pirate rooms at, at Caribbean Beach. Yeah, no and one you got to think. Does. Like, I mean, those sort of things have their their phases, and pirates are on their way out as far as yes. kids go. Definitely. So. Mm-hmm. Now they time, need superhero rooms. Time for a refurb. Yeah. yeah, the haunted mansion nerds are the ones with all the money. So yeah. mm-hmm. that's true. That's what they should gone for. And if you've ever tried to yeah. walk around one of those pirate beds and not cracked your legs on it or your feet, <laughs> like those things are not shaped to be in a hotel room. No, I've never They're, stayed in one of those. I toured one, but I did not stay in it, and I'm glad I did. I've stayed in one once, and tall people. Yeah. They're not for tall people. That's what well, yeah, heard, the child size outer, beds yeah, basically yeah. Yeah. in. So mm-hmm. unless you sleep dead in the middle of the bed, you don't have enough room. I didn't have any issues, but and I don't think that, then they shouldn't do a a doom buggy bed. They should just do a coffin. Like I want to sleep mm-hmm. in a coffin, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like you do. I really do. I've always wanted to sleep in a coffin. No thanks. Yes. I want to sleep in a coffin, but only if it's a queen sized. Coffee. <laughs> Sealy posturepedic <laughs> coffee. Uh, who, who wants to pre- present their master class first? Any any volunteers? I got nothing. I'll volunteer. Um, right. Are you all familiar with the fact that the haunted mansion almost was a boat ride? 
See, this was not something I actually <laughs> think I've ever read about. I mean, I knew about the walkthrough original. Mm-hmm. I saw I saw one sentence about it in the Haunted Mansion book that we all have. Mm-hmm. It just said, there was a boat idea. There was, <laughs> so I'm so very curious was, to hear about the rest of this. Yeah, they had been focused on that it was going to be a walkthrough. Oh, I remember. And, yeah, there was, the captain yeah. was going to be the... It was like a ship's captain ghost thing. Yeah, and the um, Imagineers were starting to get worried about crowd flow because it's supposed to be a spooky attraction. They were worried that what if people, what if little kids are getting scared and screaming and holding up or, or how are we going to keep people from touching everything? And so uh, in the early 60s, uh, and this was, you know, they're finally trying to develop the an attraction inside the mansion because it, it was it had the building was there for a long time before they put anything in it. And an imagineer named Fred Joger, who I hadn't heard of previously, he um, invented portable yogurt. Yes, <laughs> yogurt. So he pitched the idea to Claude Coates that well, what if we made it a boat ride? And that would solve the problem of of the flow because it would keep everybody moving through. So he and Claude Coates worked up the concept and their idea was that it was going to be a creepy old manor house that's basically sinking into the bayou. And then they could have ghosts and creepy stuff coming up out of the water. That's exactly but, what Monster Plantation is at six. Yeah, months. right. The problem. <laughs> Somebody stole something. <laughs> the problem was, so they worked this whole thing up and everything I've read has said that they, they think that concept art exists but no one has seen it. So they don't know whether it's whether they just trashed it or whether it's in the archive somewhere. Um, they may have just trashed it because they presented it to Walt and reportedly he said, we've already got too many damn boat rides in the park. <laughs> <laughs> and which is kind of ironic because this was um, this was like 1964, 65, I think I, I read and they hadn't even opened Pirates of the Caribbean and it's a small world yet. Those didn't open until 68, 69. At some point, um, Walt was like, all right, it's just easy yeah, to make another I, damn boat yeah. ride. <laughs> was that one the first Omnimover style vehicle? Yes. And that's so in 69, it was 1967. Um, that wasn't the first, but that was that that was available. Um, yeah. and, and it solved the the flow problem because the uh, Omnimover is not only continually moving, but then it has the added benefit of being able to turn to face Mm -hmm. whatever action so the first one was that uh the mighty microscope at disneyland where you shrunk down through the microscope so they so they had to they they scrapped it so that you know that may be what happened to the concept art they may have were like oh i hated it somebody (laughs) somebody burned it throw it away um but he the other interesting thing that i found about this was um there's a rumor, rumor, legend, I don't know whether, nobody knows whether this is true, um, but that the Imagineers hid a nod to this Haunted Mansion boat concept in the Disneyland Pirates of the Caribbean ride. So, um, near the end of the ride, you it's, it's, the, it's after the jail scene, before the arsenal. You pass through a section where you're kind of looking up. If you look up, there's all these burning embers. And can you picture that that room? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're talking about it's a Disneyland. It's a Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. So if you look closely, and next time, hopefully, we're on this ride in the next five years. Well, maybe after they move it to Texas. We'll yeah. Um, <laughs> if you look closely, you'll see a chair. That's kind of hanging from the ceiling and it's in the style of that sort of antebellum haunted mansion. There's also a table that's got a shawl hanging from it. And the rumor is that it's supposed to be that you're looking up into the interior of a decaying manor house that's sinking into the bayou. And that that's the... This. Oh, yeah, because the Disneyland Pirates, you start out at the bayou. Exactly. And, and then uh-huh. you, you drop down underneath the yeah, Clever. into those caverns. And the this article that I read even had a little map that apparently when you get to that spot, you're closest 
to the haunted mansion side. So <laughs> that sounds equally like the kind of nonsense that fans come up with for some of these mm-hmm. backstory things, but also like the yeah. kind of nonsense that the Imagineers come up with exactly. for these sorts of things. Yeah. So I can buy it. Yeah. There's a whole other section of this rumor that talks about the, um, the, that there's a dueling Oak. And I, I kind of got, they kind of lost me on this one. So I, there's apparently an Oak tree somewhere in both pirates of the Caribbean and in the haunted mansion. That part seemed like a stretch to me, so I yeah. kind of left that one out. That just sounds like a lazy Imagineer who's like, well, you already got a tree design. Just use the same one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what were you trying to show the jerk? Yeah. That's the concept part of the... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I've, I've seen, seen those characters. One, yeah. I didn't realize that was the boat ride. Yeah, I've seen those guys. There's... There's a band like that in the in yeah, the graveyard. It's hard to see from that. Similar to yeah, that. This was from the D23 site. Cool. It's talked about what she just talked about, and it does show that they're like oh, from swampland. Oh yeah, the the my send I send me that this. link, Jeff, and uh, yeah, we'll link cool. to it on our uh, on our Facebook page. Yeah, it's all swampy and. Mm-hmm. I could go for a sequel to the Haunted Mansion yeah, movie. No, the movie. Sure. No. Eddie Murphy <laughs> no. masterpiece. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that's inevitable after they make the that, sequel ride. Oh, I remember yeah. sequel ride. Sure. I'm sorry, Are attraction. Trying yes. to do a sequel ride mm-hmm. in, in your my, imagination. In my fan fiction universe, they are. <laughs> yes. well, speaking of things that never came to be, um, one of my favorite sort of early designs for Haunted Mansion that never actually got made was the museum of the weird um mm, yes so yeah. this was originally dreamed up by raleigh crump who is one of my favorite imagineers one of my favorite weird names and the uh, man's amazing also one of the <laughs> yeah. last few imagineers living that worked with walt um so yeah when they were mm-hmm. in in the many years that they worked on haunted mansion it seemed like it took them a pretty long time to get it going uh yeah, Raleigh Crump pitched an idea for the when it was still going to be a walkthrough that's called the Museum of the Weird. And it was basically that he was really one of the only Imagineers pitching ideas that was that focused on practical effects and was really into like the Pepper's Ghost effect and things like that. And was really sort of mm-hmm. focusing on ways to freak people out in person instead of just the overall theming. Um, so, yeah, the, there are still drawings of, of the stuff that he pitched. And it was basically like weird creatures and like living objects more focused, not on the sort of classic haunted stuff, but more on like there was like a candle man, a guy that was like made out of candle wax and like the one of, <laughs> worst superhero. Yeah. Ever. Oh, yeah. Like I'm going to melt on you. Whoa, slowly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold still. Oh, wait. <laughs> is that like our is that like our yeah, yeah, right? little, uh, T-shirt mascot? Yeah, so good. <laughs> My favorite one that he designed is is labeled as weird mistress of evil. And it looks no. like it looks like a cross between like Elvira and like a Dungeons and Dragons character and my 12th grade ex-girlfriend who was really into Bauhaus and she, yeah, it's this really, she's got like weird, like spider boob bra on and stuff. And basically, so he wanted to just have this museum of the weird where there were all these weird characters and things to look at. Um, and it, so he pitched it to Walt and everybody else thought it was stupid, but apparently it kept Walt up that night and he couldn't sleep. So he asked him to like keep developing it. And then they like tried to do it as an exit sort of gift shop type thing for the ride. And it basically just fell apart in the end. Um, But they did use a lot of the stuff that he had designed. Like the seance room basically was his original design. They they modified it. But where Mm -hmm. Leota is, is, was basically his seance room idea. And his idea, he had a chair that had a face on it that was going to talk and sort of host the seance instead of Leota. And the the chair is actually still in the ride. There is a chair with a face on it. Um, Is that the Donald Duck chair? Yeah, the Donald Duck chair. You know, there's a lot of stuff, and and apparently, like the wallpaper that um, is so iconic now was based on his drawings. He didn't do it, but they told him um, that they were going to use his design. Yeah, there's yeah, the sketches are really the great. I'm, I'm a big fan of his artwork. Then, it's really super creepy. That candle um, man. And then the the it's funny thing that I I love about it is that he did the original designs for the stretching room too. 
And he drew them up and designed them and was really happy to turn them in and was promptly told by Mark Davis that he was going to redo them because they were no good. Oh. Yeah, and totally redid them. But but the, the characters and the concept of the stretching room, how it was going to look, was done by him. So. They stayed the same. He just did different artwork. Yeah, he just did it more in his style. And, you know, mm-hmm. because, yeah, you, you look at those and you can tell that's Mark Davis. Artwork yeah, I'm glad. I love those. I do too, I and I, I, I like Mark Mark Davis's artwork as much as I love Raleigh Crump's sort of design styles that he came up with. It, it obviously that stuff, most of it wouldn't fit in the way that the Haunted Mansion is now. Mm-hmm. It's more an homage to classic horror. Mm-hmm. I love the right. idea of one of the original ideas of, the, of having it be like a a pathway that went up off off of Main Street, yeah. USA, and into the mm-hmm. crappy old thing and doing a walkthrough attraction up there i would love to have seen that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. i don't think they could do something like that not necessarily off main street obviously but just to walk through something to lead up to it like expand that. it yeah mm-hmm. and the uh, original designs there of that are what the phantom manor in disneyland paris look like yeah mm-hmm. and they they actually yeah. did take some of the Creepy. museum of the weird stuff and and put those kind of concepts into mystic manor as well yeah, yeah. I love the fact that Walt oh, was yeah. totally into it because <clears throat> he was like, he had him working on that yeah. stuff for a long time. There's, um, you can find some clips from the old Walt mm-hmm. Disney presents or the wonderful world of color shows where he was like doing his previews of the Haunted Mansion. You can see the models and you can see Raleigh working on these little sculptures of the various weird ideas. And they're just, yeah, just the craziest and things. And he says so in, in cool. interviews that, that pretty much most of all the other Imagineers really wrote him off and thought that what he was coming up with was was pretty out there and and was just not worth the time but walt was right with it and he was he was one of the youngest imagineers too at the time so he didn't even feel like he had a place to be talking but walt totally latched onto him and and went with it so and he turned out to be one of the greatest imagineers we've had so Walt knew what he was talking about. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. mm-hmm. Walt Disney? Yeah. Weird. Walter Disney. Elias Disney? Who the thunk? The guy that oh, created the Michael the Mouse. Mm-hmm. I like that guy. <laughs> Turns out those pickled cigarettes no, hadn't clouded his brains all. and his judgment as much as we thought. <laughs> they screwed his lungs up pretty good. Yeah. Sad. Uh, well, speaking of the walkthrough versions of the attraction, I wanted to talk about a few of the different very earliest ideas for kind of the back story and these walkthrough versions because uh they, they went through a through a series of different ideas here and and they were all like actually really kind of very dark yeah. <laughs> to begin with um it took them a long time to to get to the point where it was going to be a ride vehicle, and they were really stuck on um, on this walk through attraction, um, which is actually what they originally wanted to do with Pirates mm-hmm. First too. Yeah, so I read of, that. Um, so, and they were all going. The other neat thing was they all each of these different versions they were going to be hosted by a cast member who would take you through, and it would be like a like a tour through a museum or kind of like the great movie ride was. Um, so the first version would have been, um, led by a maid or a butler who would have taken you through, uh, and told you the legend of Captain Gore. Ooh, who, Captain Gore. Yeah, and, <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, uh, he was going to be, a a, a a murderous sea captain, um, who, uh, who murdered his, his bride after he, Caught her cheating with uh, someone else. For kid. Captain, wow! <laughs> right, which yeah, uh, exactly. But then they they Brandy. had these plans for <laughs> they'd go in different rooms. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hear she was a fine girl, but her life, her love, and her um, lady. <laughs> Um, so, but, and the thing that fascinates me that I like a lot is when when you would go through these different rooms and there would be a lot of the the butler or or maid host or hostess would kind of interact with the scare effects so like they'd be in a room telling you about what happened in this parlor room and then all of a sudden like the the candle sconces that looked like hands would reach out and grab them or something or they'd mysteriously disappear and then meet up with you again in another room later on down the walk kind of like Mm -hmm. the great movie ride that kind of thing um so there's the murderous sea captain who shows up in portraits um 
and stuff throughout the different versions of the Haunted Mansion. And he kind he has of has like a grave in the to, queue at Magic Kingdom. Yes. Right? Uh, yeah, he inspired yeah. like the that guy captain, was a different yeah. version of him. Are but yeah, Haunted Mansion lore. Come on. How many murdering sea <laughs> captains uh, turns can there out, be? Turns out. Turns out that house is full of semen. Oh, I'm sorry. I just looked it up. That's actually the grave of the Gorton fisherman. Sorry about that. Yeah. He knows what you did. That's why it smells like fish sticks. Then the next version uh, would would take you to Bloodmere Manor, um, an old southern plantation um, that they had moved this is where the storyline where Disney said that they, Walt Disney said they found this mansion and they moved it brick by brick back to New Orleans Square. And the neat, the the hook on this one that's really cool is um, supposedly the construction crew ran into these troublesome ghosts while they were fixing it up to be ready for uh, guests and they kept on like poltergeist activity and um this the story would have been that one of the bricklayers ended up dying in, <laughs> in the mansion and his ghost was going to be your host that took you around the house and um uh, and there's even a version of this idea where you would be walking through the house and then eventually you would end up standing on a piece of scaffolding left behind by the builders and that scaffold platform that you're on would start moving and would turn into a ride vehicle to take you through the rest of the mansion. Whoa. There's really cool concept art where all of a, it's over water and then all of a sudden it lowers you down under the surface of the water to the uh, That seems complicated. Crypt of the Haunted Mansion. Yeah, it sure does. Um, and then the the last one that I wanted to briefly talk about that I thought was really funny was because Walt Walt really seemed to enjoy his his TV series they did and and acting on camera. So there was a version um, of the story where Walt Disney was going to be the host of the Haunted Mansion. At least when you first came in, there would have been there was well <laughs> there was there was going to be. Um, <laughs> Well, he's dead now, so it would make sense. <laughs> well, no, oh, that's true. <laughs> no, what was going to happen was he was there was going to be a tape, uh, a video at the beginning of him welcoming you to a mansion and saying he's going to lead you through, kind of like uh, Rod Serling oh, yeah, the in Tower the of yep. Tower of Terror. But then, but then quickly, a giant hairy arm of some sort of <laughs> gorilla beast would reach on screen and pull him wow. out. <laughs> giant and, hairy um, arm. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then he would be replaced by a ghost similar to the ghost host that we have now. So I like that idea of just because Walt loved to seem to love yeah, hamming it did. up. And, man, if you watch if you watch some of those old specials, he was just the dumbest stuff, but yeah. he seemed to be having so yeah, much he fun was with adorable. it. Um, he shouldn't host something yeah. scary. <laughs> no. no, no, not at all. Uh, now, Patrick Swayze, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> He's terrifying. <laughs> now he is. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. He's he, the years haven't been kind to him. Oh, no. Is the attraction that has the most available merchandise? Thank oh, God. Absolutely. No. Uh, my shelves say yes. Yeah. 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 No, I love it. I've yeah. What else would Jeff spend I, his money on? I, it, I want more. And every every kind of thing you I can need think more, of, yeah. like yeah, oh yeah. Ooh, have you seen the board game that they just came out yeah, with? I want the board it? game. No, I haven't. It's uh, fun. I think they put it out with Funko. I don't really know what you do. I just know that there's a board game. Yeah, board it's the first one that's so just I a straight it, yeah. haunted mansion board game. It's not like haunted mansion uh, life haunted or mansion Clue or right, right. Mm. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. yeah, Funko makes good board games too. So yeah. I want to get did not. Oh, they made it. Jeff has a haunted mansion hatbox ghost tiki. Yeah, tiki shirt, Jeff Granito design. Yeah, and a tiki mug. Tiki cool. mug. Oh yes, sure. Yeah, and something else. I have a lot of haunted. Oh, I have the haunted mansion. The little working clock, the grandfather clock. Mm-hmm. To talk in it. Oh, they designed cool. it. I had to turn it off. I never run it because <laughs> yeah. they designed it to actually <laughs> knock the side of the wall. So it makes the so most obnoxious. Always, yeah. <laughs> Not but it's like that. It sounds exactly it. like that when you're on the ride. That that yeah, knocking. It's sound. awesome for an effect for a minute, but it like sits next to my desk, and I cannot have that. <laughs> I don't. I don't actually like the haunted mansion. Oh. 
Oh, no, that's, a confession. You're a liar. I certainly have not branded. Kind of I certainly have not branded my my body with. Yes, you have. <laughs> you have <laughs> Madame Leota for a tet, right? So yeah. yeah, the the haunted mansion is one of my earliest memories. Just period of of anything that stuck out in my head, and it was the moment when as a kid i was just like i don't know what this is it scares the crap out of me but i want more <laughs> of it and i love it and i need to seek out everything and so from then it like it set me off on universal monsters mm-hmm. classic horror still to this day like i i consume old classic horror movies daily it's just it's part of who mm-hmm. i am and so the haunted mansion to me is 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 like sort of the the embodiment of like the combination of my two favorite things, which is Disney All that and stuff. really mm-hmm. creepy. So. Mm-hmm. Can we get a picture of you wearing your Haunted Mansion leggings and Crocs together? <laughs> That'd be I don't great. have any, but I certainly would tell them this exists. I would certainly. Oh, they exist. Do they no, I mean, they we exist can, in Jess's world. We, we, can, we can make sure that Jeff's that happens. I'll, on be, shop I'll Disney be headed right now. back down to Walt Disney World in a couple weeks. I'll we'll bring some back for you. We'll, we'll record an episode <laughs> where we do a commentary track for the horrible Haunted Mansion movie, and I'll dress head to toe Haunted Mansion for that. Oh, yes. I hope so. You know so. what I'm so sad about is I never got in on the. Uh, studio where they would take your photo and make I, we have one for every member of my family the ghost <laughs> you really? oh yeah it's one of my so favorite things did that. yeah i love I, those. I, why did they get rid of it was it just not selling well enough I, I think they weren't selling well and i think it was not very cost prohibitive because now you can go in and you get a death certificate just a piece of paper with your name on it that said you, says you're a ghost so they that's, that's not it's pretty as cool. Yeah, and those photos were really well done. Yes. And they were only yeah. like thirty bucks or something a piece. They weren't very expensive. So I can't believe we never got one. Were those the lenticular ones that really lenticular ones? I looked at them I don't yeah, know, eight hundred cool. times. Like so, hey, I'm gonna do that yeah. sometime when I feel like it. But I never wanted to wait. You had to wait like wait for your appointment or whatever. Yeah. But now oh, that whole room is full of those Jeff? jars, those it. apothecary uh, jars. Turn back around, no. those, those jars yeah, are actually pretty cool. Yeah, I want one of those jars, cool. those spirit cool. jars. I like cool. one of those. Mm-hmm. One of the ones that, that mm-hmm. they have in the jar, I just noticed this looking at a picture oh, of it. Oh, look is at the that. Sea that is so good. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Creepy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're so well done. That's awesome. Yeah, that is actually shockingly good for something for you get bucks. from a mm-hmm. theme yeah. park. Yeah, I know. I mean, I love Memento Mori. I'm glad that that it's got a dedicated gift shop, but now it's going to waste because they had that back photo room, and that mm-hmm. back room where they did the photos had the best wallpaper I've ever seen. That had like it just looked like sort of antebellum old plantation pictures but if you looked really closely oh. it was actually like ghosts from the haunted mansion and different scenes and oh cool yeah. is it still mm, it's still cool. there you can go in that room for the, the room's the, still there it's all the, the way the in the jars. back of the shop and behind a jar. curtain so mm-hmm. i think you, Did you say you found a there. sea captain jar one of the jars is oh yeah oh yeah oh. i've only got the haunted uh the hat box ghost one. Oh yeah, yeah there yes. he is there's captain yeah. over love it yeah Oh, wait, is this is Captain Tiberius Crunch? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's weird. <laughs> Isn't he only a Commodore, the though? SS General Mills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of that I'll stand in line for a long time for, but I stood in a line for an hour, hour and a half to get the. The Madame Leota sippers from Sleepy Hollow. Yes. And Jeff I appreciate says. that you did. Thank you, you so much. <laughs> are so welcome. That was totally it lights up, right? Yeah. It does. And they, they look great. Yeah. I mean, it mm-hmm. changes. It looked, when I heard that it was coming out, I was like, a, a sipper? That's going to be stupid. And we were walking through, we were walking back towards the Haunted Mansion, and they yeah. just had a cast member standing out in front of sleepy hollow holding one and i was like oh it looks <laughs> yes. so cool and then he's like yeah the line is back over by the castle because it was, like, was, yeah, was a physically yeah. distanced really yeah. long line 
And so I sent I sent them on Which the rides Halloween? and I stood in line to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Which Halloween shop is it that has that animated uh Madame Leota? Oh, the talks? new one. Yeah. The Spirit USA or one of those. I know they've yeah. got it at like World of Disney right now. It's the Spirit Halloween shop that used yeah. to be uh Epcot. <laughs> 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 Once a year on October first, <laughs> they put up a big plastic banner over the sign. <laughs> Future world turns into spirit. <laughs> Halloween. Uh, that's good. What's your favorite haunted mansion totally item that you have, Jess? Oh, um, it is the miniature uh, Madame Leota seance room diorama. <laughs> Which, oh, those little things are so cool. Mm. That is one of the best things I've ever bought. That's super such cheap. A good value, too. Yeah. Yeah. Those super cheap. Tiny, and I mean, like tiny bars. little figures, and there's a string so that the Leota head floats above everything in the room. Oh, I have one of those. Too. Cool. Yeah. I, it's really awesome. I, no, I'm I building a shopping list. There are a few others that I've been meaning to get. And I actually have mm-hmm. one that I bought for Jeff that I haven't sent to him. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I, I bought was you the bride. Of. I bought you the bride, and it's actually sitting on my shelf over here. So. I said, Why don't and I then I it? decided that I wanted it, and so I kept it. No, it's still in the box. I just am a it's lazy still put together and over here on the shelf. It's in it's the collecting, box. So that it's collecting. I can put it on dust. eBay. Yeah, I'm giving it dust. So it's oh, good. Yeah. Oh, really that's so kind of you. Yeah, I do want one of those. I'm gonna make that tomorrow. Did you guys ever see that that mystery box that they yeah. put together for a while? Yeah, that was like every it was like a hundred. <laughs> what? What's in the box? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> oh. They sent you like stuff from the haunted mansion. There was like a whole mystery story that you had to use a ghost radio to tune what? in and yeah, solve I the story. Getting in on it because it yeah, was like the first box that. came with like an actual china teacup. Yeah, it was like a hundred bucks a month for it or something like that. But oh, you got so cool cards and fake newspapers and teacups and all kinds of crazy nice. stuff. Yeah, it was cool. If you could do a whole room more stuff like yeah. kitchen, like Jess, would you in like your future home? Yeah, actually we're we're planning on moving next year and my plan is to to go with an extra bedroom and it's gonna have this haunted mansion. Yes. Nice. You can buy a really nice haunted mansion wallpaper on the several different sites. It's yeah. not cheap, but it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's outrageously expensive. Yeah. We looked into you it. You want yeah. to do a feature wall? <laughs> <laughs> I'd yeah, love to just do. I'd love to do a room where it would look exactly like Madame Leota's room. Mm. Just, just the séance room, though. Wow. There's a lot of those effects that you could yeah. actually rig up too that are not. I mean, uh, most of what's going on in the haunted mansion isn't that hard to yeah, exactly. reproduce. So you could. That's what she <laughs> well, said. Hire you to come do it. Uh, and I know. So I know it's against. All right everything and and people have tried it and and they always get caught but i'm i'm tasking you guys and everybody that knows and loves me yeah. when i die at least i mean like a minuscule <laughs> amount of my ashes just like no, like I'll a tiny it. just put yeah. them in there i don't care i know they vacuum i know they clean it up whatever i know that but just the act of doing it is the only thing i care about after i die so you got it okay <laughs> you know what i'll do i'll have you in my hand and i'll <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> off me at Leota and, and my my soul will be at peace we'll pencil you in for Disneyland next maybe next by the time it, wait then. but maybe wait, wait. by the time it opens I didn't know there was I didn't know I had to like fit a time frame here yeah that's that's when I'm available I was just trying to think of a time when all the rest of us were going to be uh, able to true. ride the Haunted we'll Mansion together. together and that's the next time <laughs> yeah. like crap I gotta get on this what if or, we just like cut off your toe and burn that and then you could help us <laughs> that's so creepy that, that I would totally be up for that right <laughs> <laughs> I have a permanently broken toe so that oh, would be boy. fine hey so you're not even using it <laughs> yeah no it's my pinky toe I've stubbed it so yeah, many times useless. you can bend it backwards and stuff Ew, take gross. that one <laughs> take that one well actually we heard of a way you can uh, remove someone's toes we saw photos of it once on a trip to Vegas We'll tell you about it someday. That sounds like another <laughs> show idea. It is, it is. That's one of those oh creepy travel stories shows. We'll get to it someday. We'll put that on the on the dark, dark <laughs> <Yes>. travel episode. <laughs> 
Well, before this takes any more of a turn, thanks for hanging out with us again this week. If you're excited to hop into Doom Buggy and explore the boundless realm of the supernatural in the Haunted Mansion, or explore anywhere else around the world, Key to the World Travel has a three-story Victorian-era brick mansion with four columns at the entrance and wrought iron decorative railings around the balconies, plus a private cemetery plot in the backyard, and including in, uh, interior rooms such as an octagonal portrait gallery with a cupola ceiling, an overgrown observatory, a parlor furnished with seance equipment, a ballroom set for a ghostly birthday party, an attic haunted by a murderous bride, and a private family crypt full of expert travel planners ready to make your vacation <laughs> dreams a reality. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com to get started with a no-obligation quote. One take, Dan, they call it. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan, I wasn't recording. Can you do that Holy crap. <laughs> Louder for the folks I'll just the use the crappy Zoom copy. <laughs> Don't forget to catch up with our friend, the Theme Park Professor, for all the latest theme park news and tips at www.themeparkprofessor.com. Word of mouth is still the best way to help us grow our show. If you have a friend or two who you think would appreciate our special brand of globe-trotting jackassery, tell them what makes our show so great and send them our way. You can find links to subscribe to the show on your favorite apps at www.goldkeyadventures.com. We can't wait to hang out with you again next week, and we'll see you real soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Don't haunt flow. No, actually, haunt flows. If you, if you die soon, haunt flows. To ask a question or share your travel story, you can reach us by smoke signal, carrier pigeon, or send an email to goldkeyadventurers at gmail.com. And make sure you follow the Gold Key Adventure Society on Facebook and Instagram. A huge thanks to our sponsor, Key to the World Travel. For all your travel planning needs, visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a free quote and help planning the trip of a lifetime. Tell them the gold Key Adventurers sent you. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Thanks to Outer Vibe for the use of their song Hoka Hey for the intro and outro of our show. Find them on Facebook at The Outer Vibe or check out www.outervibe.com for tour dates, music, merch, and more. We'll see you next week for another meeting of the Gold Key Adventure Society. And until then, remember, life is short and the world is wide. So go have an adventure. My internet is unstable. It is pretty good. unstable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, it's a perfect fit. Tell me something like that. All right.